Okay, finally my sliding glass doors have come in. The tracks have come in as well as the glass. So I'm going to be putting those in today. And I'll also show you guys a few things that I did well. I didn't record, but I just I installed the radiant heat panel and a few other things. Installed some vents and, and uh, things like that. So we'll show you that and then uh, we're going to get to doing the glass. Okay, so here's one of the enclosures. It's actually upside down right now, if you can tell. So one of the things I did, I, for some reason it's not really showing up on the camera because there's kind of some glare from the sun, but I did end up staining this running board. I just really, really cheap bought some Minwax pre-stained cloth and just swiped it over the top. Just one really, really quick coat. It's not a perfect stain. It, it actually turned out to look very, very close to the vinyl floor, so it kind of looks good that way, but uh, the, the, the plain wood just was starting to bother me. So, And I had so much time between the glass, I started getting antsy, so I figured I would do some more things. So a quick couple things that I did while uh, I was away or I didn't film. One was I installed on each of the enclosures just a quick strip of LED lights. Um, I can't show you what they're on right, how it looks when they're turned on because the power supply is somewhere else. But even just, like snakes obviously don't need lights, but these two pretty much illuminate the entire enclosure. So they look really good. I'll show you guys. Once everything's set up, we'll turn the lights on. Uh, I put through, I put a little hole in the back. I think I had said before that I wasn't sure about vents. I did end up putting a vent in because I needed somewhere to feed some cords through. So the radiant heat panel and the lights have, are, have a cord going through the back. So I put a vent over top. We'll see, hopefully it doesn't let too much hum or air out and uh, hopefully I can still keep the humidity up. If not, I'll just throw a piece of tape over it in the back just to seal it up a little bit. Uh, I can show you guys, I actually ordered those off of eBay. So they came off of eBay, they came from the UK. They're just these really, really little, they're like less than five centimeters wide uh, vivarium vent covers. So those are actually pretty neat. They're super cheap. They're like 10 bucks for eight of them. And I think that's it. I bolted this, the radiant heat panel to the ceiling. And I think that's everything. So I'll show you the glass. So the first thing. These are the, the tracks for the glass, so the, the taller one is the top track and the bottom, the narrower one is the bottom track. Uh, I got the glass professionally cut and polished and everything. Like I said before, I did not cheap out on the glass. I couldn't find any just plain pane glass at Home Depot in my city anyway. So I ended up ordering glass. It was expensive. Uh, it was like $300. So very, very expensive. That gave me the glass, the tracks, and everything I needed. Um, I live in Canada, so things are a little more expensive here sometimes. And I also got tempered glass, and it's five mil, so it's pretty, it's pretty good quality. I'll, I'll grab a pane right now. So I mean, it just looks like average glass, but they did a really nice job. The corners are buffed, so it doesn't get caught in the tracks. I'm getting fingerprints all over them right now, but whatever. The horizontal edges are polished. Of course, you won't see the top edges, so they're still a little bit rough. But that was, I, I didn't need them to be polished, and they didn't even suggest that I needed to. So. Uh, it looks pretty good when they're all in, so we're going to put these tracks in right now. Alright, so we're going to install the top track first. Uh, this is the second one I've done. I, I did the first one already because I always like to test them before I film just to make sure I don't mess anything up big time. I ended up using the No More Nails, and I actually may have to stop this video mid-glue mid because I have a feeling that this is not enough. So I might be able to do one track, but then I have to go back and get some more. Uh, it's still open for another hour or so. So I'll run a pretty thick bead of that stuff right across the bottom. And then we're just going to stick it right where it needs to be. And I've been kind of putting weight on it by putting some books and things on it. But this stuff sticks so well. And it's about 15, 20 minutes. It's almost concrete. I think 24 hours is the full cure time. But uh, after 15 minutes, it feels like it's pretty much tight. On the very first one I did, I tried putting a screw into it. Don't do that. Not a good idea. The I put a pilot hole with a bit and the screw got about halfway through and it was just too tight. I had these little screws. It ended up stripping the screw and I just couldn't get it out. And It ended up not being a big deal. The glass isn't bumping against the screw, but yeah, it was really frustrating for like 30 minutes trying to get it out. So I'm going to put some, uh, some of this stuff on here and then uh, we're going to stick the first one down. Okay. Luckily this stuff is, I'm really impressed with this no more nails because it's pretty forgiving like you can wipe it off and there's a lot of time where you can kind of play with it 
until it solidifies. Like you got like 15 minutes for it to move around. Of course, you don't want to be moving around for that much, but so. I'm, so I'm, I'm just gonna go heavy with this stuff, because, especially the top one, because it's got to deal with gravity. So I let this sit for 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. I'm just gonna pull everything off here. So you guys can see, this is like, it is stuck on there for good. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the other side. I'm going to do the bottom rail now, and like I said, I was running really low in this no, no more nails glue, and I decided to just run the risk and assume that I have enough. It does seem like I have enough, so I'm just going to... Alright, let's go. I've moved the enclosures back into the reptile room and uh, I'm really, really happy with the way they look. So like it did, this is the next day. So yesterday we put the, uh, the rails or the tracking in for the glass and just using these gloves to pull the glass out of the glass. I'm very, very happy with the, the job they did on the glass. The doors slide really easy. I've ordered finger tabs to make the glass slide a little bit easier, but for now I'm just using these gloves. I still have to clean them. There's fingerprints all over them. But the way these work, obviously, just push them up, pull them out. They lift out really nice and easy. This is five mil, five millimeter tempered glass, so I have no issues. I don't have any worries about it breaking. That's uh, super, super tough. My heat and humidity tests went pretty well. I have a tub of water sitting in each of them, and the humidity went to sort of 65 to 70 percent which should be pretty good because I can raise the humidity of the room. I think it's kind of dry right now, so but that, that's kind of a good range to be in because I can. Uh, it's much easier to control the temperature of the room or the temperature and humidity of the room and then uh, if I have to make any adjustments in here, I, I can. So uh, very, very happy. The, the glue is sticking super well, no issues. So I'm just going to uh, set my panel up so I'm, I'm putting together a a panel on the side of all my electrical, my thermostats, and temp probes and things like that. And then I'm gonna put, the, then we're gonna put some substrate and some decor into it, and then we'll put the snakes inside and see how they like it. Things are looking pretty good. I'm pretty much wrapped up here. Temperatures are balancing out, so I just had to make sure I was testing the 
had the thermostat set to the right temperatures to make sure that the inside spot is 90 degrees. We wanted to make sure the heat on the warm side is balancing out and all the humidity. Humidity is still a little bit low, so I'm only at 60 in both these. I'd like to get this up to 70, but the uh, humidity in the room is only about 38%, so I'm, I have my humidifier running to, to crank that up. So I, I think these guys are ready to go. I don't see any reason why they can't go in right now. I have been using these gloves to open up the glass because I don't have finger pulls, which I ordered. They're coming in the mail but I just don't want to get fingerprints on the glass. So I think, of course, what everybody wants to see is the bow is going in. So let's, let's introduce these guys to their new home. Grab a hook. So yeah, I'm still waiting on the finger pulls for the glass as well as uh, locks, so cabinet locks are coming in. So unfortunately for the next two or three weeks depending on how long it takes for them to get in. I'm not going to have locks on the cabinets but I am just going to throw some wooden dowels in there so they can't open the, they can't open the doors. Alright, so we're going to throw them in. Winston's going to go in first. It's just going to be a pain. Sometimes bows are really tough to get out of their spots. Anyway, so this is my... Uh, so he's actually half... His grandparents, his grandsire and granddam, are his half uh, Sonoran Desert Boa, half Colombian. And he's a male. He's apparently had leopard. So, I mean, I have to prove that out. But apparently he has some visual markers. And... Uh, He's just over two years old, so he's growing nice and slow, super, super healthy, nice uh, muscle tone. I don't think he's going to get very big because he's a male and is, has some, obviously, some Central American blood in him, so I imagine him maxing out at maybe four or a half, five feet. But, uh, so like I said, this, this enclosure might suit him perfectly. So let's let him explore. He likes to explore. He's usually pretty comfortable uh, exploring around, so... They've been off heat for almost 24 hours now because I had to install the heat pads last night. I don't have other ones. I kept the ambient room temperature at, uh, well, not, not super warm, 75, 78 degrees, something like that. Uh, so no different than them having to be shipped somewhere for a show or something, but I'm sure he's going to be looking forward to getting onto some heat. So let's close this up. Trap some of that humidity. Yeah, he's digging right into his warm side, so... That's awesome. All right, number two. So this is my, uh, I rescued this boa, I guess about a year ago. She was on sale on some kind of like a Craigslist type thing, and this person knew, had no idea what she was doing, and she was feeding this thing like four or five pinkies a week, and it, it was very bizarre. So anyway, I picked her up. She's been doing pretty well. She's, uh, she's not quite as healthy as he is. We'll, we'll see if I can get her back. I've had her for about a year, so it's taking some time. Her muscle tone is way, way less, but that could just be that she, she might just be more, more of a flaccid boa. She does have a little crook in her tail. But that's the way she was born, apparently. And uh, I don't know if I said she was, she's het uh, cal albino. And she's about the same age. She's two, just over two. And she's nice. She's got some pinks in her. Sometimes she's a little bit uh, rude, but for the, I've never been tagged by her, so... Let's not start today. And again, she's probably a little bit chilly, so I'm just going to go put her on the warmer side of the enclosure. Hey. And we'll bring you guys over here. I can't wait for these sliders to come in. I don't want to put gloves on every time I close the windows, but I really don't want fingerprints.
Okay, I think that's everything. That's uh, other than adding the locks and the finger pulls on, that's pretty much the end of this build. So we'll let these guys explore a bit. I can see that they're pretty apprehensive in there. They'll probably spend a couple days kind of hiding. But uh, overall, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. And like I said from the very beginning, you're not going to be able to do this exact thing. Obviously, you're not going to find these exact cabinets somewhere. But uh, hopefully, or you might completely disagree with the things that I did here. But if you don't, then hopefully it just gives you some ideas or something that you can do um, on your own and, and, and make something. And uh, I should be able to get a many good years out of these and if they outgrow them then build something else and obviously then I have to get a new snake so it's a win-win. Hey guys thank you very much for watching the video I really really appreciate it I hope uh, you picked up a thing or two that you can use you know in the future if you're gonna build a, a reptile or snake enclosure on your own that's it for me you may or may not want to subscribe to my channel I cannot tell you or promise you if I'm gonna post another video ever again uh, I think I might I think I might post maybe uh, a couple updates on my animals I have a few other things in here so uh, that may or may not happen so please subscribe at your own risk and uh, if you don't that's alright and if you do well maybe I'll see you later alright have a good day